It's a bit of a struggle between the, the conscious mark and the subconscious reaction to, to what's happening with the paint itself. So it just evolves. I never know where I'm going. They are like Danish pastries, layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. The evolution takes a long time. And with the time comes the decisions that you make along the way. It is oil paint. There's various ways of, of applying oil paint. It can be as thick as what's on the brush, which I've applied this way. Sometimes you can, you can thin it. And it's, it's a chemical reaction, so it's alchemy. <laughs> Layering is very much part of her process and her work, not only on canvas, but also the kind of mental process that goes into creating these works. So she has multiple canvases going at the same time and works from canvas to canvas and comes back, reworks, washes over. But it's all about creating layers of memory through the creation of these landscapes. Helen was an escape from Sydney at the time. My children were very young and the children were not allowed to play in the front yard in those days in the suburbs and, and I was always concerned about them. But here I felt to allow them to have the freedom to wander through the town by themselves and they just loved it. That landscape is imbued with her connection to her family through that landscape and that very much comes out in the work that she does there. So you've got those beautiful layered canvases that are quite evocative, almost ghostly in terms of the kind of soft layering and the muted colours that she brings through those canvases. It's an emotional connection with the landscape that you can see through the painting. I grew up with my mother and my sister and our lounge room was our studio. And I thought everybody lived this way. My mother worked very hard. She worked in a commercial art industry and she'd bring home work on the weekends. And we'd have sculptures going, painting easels up. It was a little chaotic, but it was fun. I was always drawing, particularly people. I was always you know, fascinated with personalities and facial expressions and things. Mum always knew about the Julian Ashtons and so she thought, well, if I'm going to do this, why don't I try Julian Ashtons? Julian Ashtons is an art school that was known as the Sydney School and was established in the late 1890s by Julian Ashton. It was an atelier school based in Sydney that taught the traditions of life drawing, of modelling, of clay and painting. And you'd progress from your drawing stages where you'd just have this plaster bust and you'd just have this very fine vine charcoal and you'd learn to draw the, and develop how you can see really the hand-eye coordination. As you progress from there, you can probably get into the painting class. But then I have spent the rest of my life unlearning, <laughs> trying to back away from this formal training and tried to use my intuition and my emotions and feelings more rather than the knowledge that I had, trying to tap into something else. I've only really had my portrait painted twice, notably. With Danelle, it didn't take long before the conversation was intimately concerned with life and how you feel about life, which is why I brought along John Thompson's poetry. Because he was my father and influenced me so much in my attitude to life, I thought, if I read this to you, you'll understand certain things. Jack Thompson, with that painting, he was a, he was a storyteller and he'd read his father's poetry, but it was his voice. On this historic earth, we new men 
begin to feel upon these torrid tracts the contour of our ancestral acts, the continuity of our kin. And that painting is not just about the physical Jack, it's about the emotional Jack. It's about the, yeah, the sound of Jack, the, 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 the stature, the, the larger than life Jack. Both myself and my wife and our son were there when she unveiled it for us. And I was deeply moved. Somehow she has managed to see something about me, my character, myself, and that's there in that portrait. And when you see it as the subject of that portrait, you are immediately extraordinarily vulnerable and open. As with all her paintings, place is a state of the mind and an emotional state for Danelle. So she's not necessarily rendering exactly what she sees. She's rendering the emotional response to immersing herself in that landscape. While I was staying in the Northern Territory, I would go off and explore parts of the countryside. And I discovered just off the highway one day, there was this lake. It was so beautiful. It was pristine. It was almost like a little slice of heaven almost. It was just, you could see the water lilies floating on, on this almost unreal blue. And without even thinking, I was drawn to it like a moth to, to a flame. And I stood at the outermost point, so I was completely surrounded by water. I realized what an idiot I was. I knew these were croc infested waters. I call this series Deception, because if you think of life, you know, often on the surface things look beautiful and perfect, but underneath there lurks danger. There's an undercurrent that something deeper is going on. It's like a ripple in a pond, but there'll be ripples and then everything will be calm again. And I think that's a real metaphor for how Danelle sees her practice and her world. She delves into these scenes, but they're actually her exploring things that have happened in her life. Um, so she brings the past uh, into these works to work through them. In many ways, it's a cathartic act. The story about this painting began with my first journey to Hill End. One day, my son took himself off to, to the bush and he went wandering, he came back. He said, Mum, I found the most beautiful place in the whole world. And I have to take you there and we're gonna take a picnic. So that's what we did. And we're an hour and a half later, we opened from this forest or this bush. And then all of a sudden this little opening where the sun just shone in, just sufficiently to this little open ground next to a gully. And we sat there and had our picnic, but he thought it was just like, heaven for him. My son Shannon, he, he died when he was only 17 years old in 2000. I still think of him as being here. I've never accepted that. It was the saddest time. It's the strength of that emotion which holds me there. And it's not just the sadness, it's the love that holds me here. All the works were, were about that at the time and everything was about remembering, feeling, allowing it to explore all those emotions. It's how you deal with the here and now that is the measure of your life, not what you have had. That's what you have, it's what you do with it that makes you who you are. And it's interesting, it's expressed in her painting. 
Following Shannon's death in 2000, Danielle uh, became interested in reconnecting with her father and her father's family in Sweden. My father was returned to Sweden when I was about five. So the, the interest in Sweden was always there. When my mother was quite ill, gravely ill, I became a little perhaps more curious about maybe I should get in touch. And I was fascinated to see how I fitted in. I didn't know that side of my, of my life or heritage at all. She was overjoyed with the reconnection that happened in Sweden. And while she was there, she applied for a residency in Orland, in Shellshare, which is a tiny island which um, sits between Finland and Sweden. Janelle took this residency where she was alone on this tiny island. And I thought, my God, I'm the only person on this island. There's no power, there's no phones, there's no internet no connection, it's just me. It was the most significant time I could ever imagine in my life. It changed my life. And so this extreme situation really put her in this incredible sort of nexus of life experience of leaving one world behind and discovering a new world. I could breathe for the first time. I got up there and I just sat there looking out to sea and all of a sudden there was time and became mesmerized by the water. And I was looking down onto these rocks and looking down the, on the ocean, how it would be like a heartbeat. This is the heartbeat of the ocean coming rhythmically. I was thinking now, am I the rock? Am I this trying to be this strong, sturdy rock with all the turbulence around me? trying to weather me away? Or am I the water trying to meander and get around all these obstacles in my life? What's she doing uh, in, uh, in Finland? She's painting beautiful paintings. I have one of those paintings on the wall, an extraordinary painting of the ocean on rocks. I think she's a beautiful painter. I came back. I couldn't get rid of these images out of my mind. So I had these enormous canvases made up. Nothing may come of this. I may not be able to work this out, but I'm gonna to have to take that chance. And I began. And it was me daring, daring to even do these works in the first place. This vulgar word dare is like dare to live, dare to love. You know, there's a wonderful poem I wanna to read to you about that. But this is what that meant. It meant that, that feeling inside before you undertake something that you're so nervous about, you can actually physically feel it in your stomach. It can almost make you feel sick at times. But you take that step and you force yourself, okay, well, if I fail, it doesn't matter. If it's success, I've grown. And it's that growth, that chance, that courage to take the chance. Danelle's return to Hill End and witnessing the transformation of the landscape as a result of the fires in 2019 and the ability to regenerate following tragedy and devastation allowed her or gave her the opportunity to reflect on her own life, her incredible strength and her ability to evolve from her own tragedy and transform her life. I'm incredibly lucky. I always feel lucky to live the life I, I live as an artist. And I've been very fortunate to be able to live a life that I can just try to produce something. Vorga, dare. Dare to participate, dare to live. Dare to be seen, dare to hide, dare to take a step, dare to grow, dare to forget, dare to leave, dare to come closer, dare to come, dare to be yourself, dare to receive, dare to reject, dare to let it go, dare to love, dare to feel, dare to see and dare to listen. Dare to see yourself in the mirror. Dare to say, 
Dare to stay. Dare to overcome. Dare.